Hello and welcome to part five of our speaker series. This one is, what, is on why you should not write a speech. Uh, probably the most common advice I give out. Definitely the most commonly ignored advice I give out. And to my mind, probably the most important single piece of advice I could give anyone uh, who wanted to improve their public speaking. I think that it's one of the biggest mistakes in the world that you should write out a speech word for word and or attempt to memorize a speech. Um, speeches should of course be practiced, you should have notes, cue cards perhaps, you should have a, a, a broad structure that you follow, you know, your main points, your main ideas. It's okay to memorize an introduction or a joke or a few lines, but having the entire speech word for word planned out is a catastrophic error. And we're going to talk about why. So reason number one, you have a writer's voice or several writer's voices and you have a speaker's voice. The way that you write is not the way that you sound when you speak. Now, of course, you sound differently when you write academically or when you write a blog or when you write a letter to a pen pal and you speak differently to your grandparents than you do to your partner. But you have common denominators in both. Ultimately, though, you write quite significantly differently than you speak. And I mean, you can even notice this in text messages. People have a text voice that's quite distinct from their phone voice. Um, but And that's about as close as the speakers and writers voice ever gets. If you read an essay you have written or a blog post or a letter, it will not sound like you sound in a conversation. The thing about that then is that when you go to speak an essay that you've written, it's not a speech, it's an essay because you've written it, what happens is that all the natural cadence and rhythm and body language and tone that goes along with when you speak and when you speak you know you gesticulate and you you vary your tone and where you look and um how you look and all of that happens subconsciously but it makes you more engaging and authentic because humans are, are built for communication but when you start reading an essay out loud your brain isn't doing any of that stuff any of that subconscious communication because you're no longer speaking you're no longer engaging your speaker's voice and that communication just doesn't happen you will sound weird if you uh, speak aloud in your writer's voice and you won't sound natural and we've talked a lot about the importance of authenticity and one of the best ways to kill the the authentic the authenticity of your speech is to read a script the second reason is the idea of your speech being uh, malleable versus static. Once you write down or memorize your speech from start to finish, word to word, it's somewhat locked in. And it's quite hard at that point to react to audiences or changes in circumstance, whether that be an audience being warmer than you anticipated or, or colder, more standoffish, more engaging, more hostile, more welcoming. It's also harder to adjust to the venue, to the, to the circumstances, to the mood, to your own feelings at the time. Interestingly, you'll notice that a lot of best moments for famous public speakers are when the speakers break character, when they do go off script, when they go off piste. Like Obama at the State of the Union, when in a reaction to Republicans ironically applauding his line about how he won't run for president again, he, he sort of zings them with because he's won uh, uh, the maximum number of times uh, and gets a standing ovation from Democrats. These off piece moments tend to represent a, a, a really, really, a, a real highlight of a, of a speaker's speech because they are authentic, they are genuine, they are real, which again is, is what a lot of people are attracted to. But it's actually much harder to do that if you've got a script because then you really are breaking away from something quite solid. Whereas when you're more uh, willing to be, to be in the moment and to engage with the audience in real time because your speech is planned and practiced, but not solidified and static, then you are more able to have more of these moments, which makes your whole speech much better. And um, I've, I've experienced that as a coach as well. One of my uh, students years ago at the sort of like a world championship of public speaking where there was a national champion from all these different countries and they, they came to London and they came to London with their their speeches prepared and I, I only had a few days with them 
But one of mine, um, she made the fi- she made the the grand final, like the final of the finals, final of the finalists, and um, she didn't win. And I think in part it was because her speech was word for word written out. But she had a really beautiful moment in the final where she did go off piste and and she made a joke about her speech being about uh, women or it was about um, uh, widows of a, of a particular war, and made that joke about being the only woman in a seven person final. And got uh, a sort of spontaneous round of applause and standing ovation from the crowd. The only standing ovation, the only spontaneous round of applause mid-speech in the entire final. Because it was an authentic, genuine moment. And I just wish that she'd felt comfortable having more of those. Um, so the, these things are real. And, and not being nailed to a script is, is really, really useful. It also allows you to make last minute adjustments. Uh, a few years ago, I was prepping someone for a speech they were giving in the House of Lords. They weren't themselves a lord or lady. They were speaking on behalf of something. And I had been, you know, it was my job to sort of get them ready in, in a couple hours before they were speaking. But frustratingly, they, they'd already written out the speech word for word. And so there wasn't that much help I could give them except ways and sort of remaining calm and, and breathing appropriately and, and stuff like that and giving them some tips on body language because they'd solidified the speech and they weren't willing to adjust a single piece of it for fear of, of the whole thing falling apart. And so if your speech can't be adjusted, then what happens if, if new information or new circumstance or you know, you, you learn a new thing or you realise a new thing on the day, in the moment. What happens if you're doing a public speaking competition and someone before you says something that you really want to now engage with in your speech, but, oh, can't possibly edit it because it's, it's set in stone? I think it's really important that speeches can be adjusted at all times. Another um, reason not to write out speeches is, is just simple efficiency. To get good at public speaking, as we've said many times, you need to practice it. You need to do a lot of speeches at home, on your own, in front of people, in low stakes circumstances, do as many speeches as you can. It's all about, you know, good quality reps or time under the bar or mat time or time on the court, time on the pitch. All these different metaphors and different sports is just, you know, the more you do it, the better you'll get. If for every speech you give, you need to write it out. Writing out a speech takes a long time. Writing out a five minute speech can easily take an hour. And that's just time you're not spending speaking. That's why we really like short prep speaking formats like BP debating, because you get a lot of speaking time for a relatively low amount of practice time. It's, it's a good ratio. And so it's important that you feel comfortable not speaking with a script and not speaking with a, a full speech written out, because then you can get a lot more practice done. And even when you're preparing for a particular speech, if you have to write out every draft, all that time you spend writing is time you're not spending speaking. You're not spending rehearsing. If instead of spending a lot of time writing, you spend that time practicing, rehearsing, recording yourself, listening to yourself, adjusting your notes and trying again, you get so much more practice done in probably a lot less time. So it's just much more efficient. There's also this idea that if a speech is locked in, if you've memorized it word for word, you are very, very vulnerable to making a mistake. Because if you know what it should be, word for word, then if you mess up one word or one sentence, then you have categorically made an error. The speech is not as good as it could have been in your mind. But if the speech isn't that solidified, if you've got the main points you want to hit, you've got an intro and a conclusion, maybe you've got a couple lines or a couple jokes or a couple turns of phrase, but ultimately it's still pretty open, you can't, it can't be perfect. And you can't mess it up with a tiny inconsequential mistake. And interestingly, the pressure of that idealized speech, that perfect speech, is not helpful. It just makes you more nervous. And I tend to find that that's when people really risk imploding, especially if you're maybe naturally a bit more anxious. Now, at some point in the last nine minutes, a lot of you will have th thought, look, Everything you're saying is reasonable, Michael, but I think for me it's just different. And look, 
I don't know how else to say this other than to say that you are not some sort of special, unique snowflake. You are just making an excuse because of emotive reasoning. You want to use scripts, so you try to justify using scripts, even when professional public speaking coaches give you fairly good reasons why you shouldn't do so. Okay? Scripts are crutches. It's less scary to read aloud than it is to give a speech with notes. I understand that because I've done a lot of public speaking and it is scary. All the logic and reasoning that you're trying to apply to why you use scripts comes down to you're worried that you're going to be in front of people and you're going to not know what to say and you're going to look down and instead of a speech you're going to have notes and it won't be helpful and you'll be trapped in front of an audience not knowing what to say and the world will end. That is everyone's fear. If you have the speech written out word for word or memorized in your head word for word, that can't happen. You will always have something to say because the speech is there. I get that fear. But if you practice and rehearse and have ideas, you will be fine and your speech will be better. Scripts are crutches, nothing more. So an extension of the previous objection is, but Obama does it. Uh, it doesn't have to be Obama, you know, you can use um, any sort of very talented public speaker who, who has their speeches out, has their speeches written out word for word, like Obama often does. Firstly, just point out that lots and lots of people who do a lot of public speaking professionally, such as politicians, are still actually quite bad public speakers, such as Theresa May, um, I would even argue David Cameron, certainly Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, like even Joe Biden to some extent, right? A lot of these famous public speakers are not actually that good at public speaking. Um, but let's take Barack Obama, a preeminent example of an absolutely phenomenal public speaker. Firstly, I mean, the most basic thing to say is just because Obama doesn't doesn't mean you should automatically, right? Because he is potentially the GOAT of public speaking. Trying to copy him would be like me trying to copy Matt Fraser's programming because I want to get fitter. The, the fittest man in history is not a good benchmark for me to start uh, organizing my training around. But let's talk about why Obama does write out speeches and why that works for him now. The first and most obvious thing is he is exceptionally experienced in public speaking, both on and off script. Uh, for his, you know, debating at school, um, his his public speaking and his community organizing at uni, at uh, both his uh, undergraduate and his postgraduate at Harvard, for his uh, community organization, he'll have done lots of um, semi-public speaking interviews, town halls. Then there was his uh, US state senate runs. Then there was his failed congressional run where he had a lot of campaigns, interviews, town halls. Then a successful senate run. And that takes us to 2004 when he gives his first big famous speech. At the point where he was giving his first big famous speech, he had given literally thousands of public speeches or interviews or town halls. So he had that experience under his belt. And if you get that amount of experience, you can start to, to write in your speaker's voice a lot more because you're so familiar with your speaker's voice. But have you done that much public speaking? Because most people haven't. Obama can write in his speaker's voice and you, you can notice this in two ways. Firstly, is that if you listen to the audiobook of A Promised Land, how he writes in a promised land is, is not that dissimilar to how he speaks as opposed to if you read like dreams for my father or the audacity of hope there is a much bigger difference there because over time he's been able to um bring together his speakers and his writer's voice he's often he's also got a lot of experience writing in his speaker's voice um which makes his speeches a, a lot more authentic even though he's reading aloud and also he has professionals who are helping him, like professional script writers or speech writers, who, whose entire job it is, is to be able to write in the exact syntax and cadence and tone of Barack Ob Hussein Obama. That's what they're meant to do. Obama needed to be very, very careful as a public speaker because, you know, he was the first African-American president. He was um, anything he said could be taken out of context. Um, and because there was always going to be people who were going to accuse him of this, that and the next thing, if he said anything even slightly untoward. He was a very, very diplomatic, and very careful speaker, perhaps a bit too diplomatic and too careful. Um, and lastly, like Obama might be very good on script, but he's also very, very, very good off script. 
And you see that in, in interviews and town halls and press conferences and when he goes off script in speeches. If you want to be a brilliant public speaker like Barack Obama, you have to first get very comfortable publicly speaking without a script, without a crutch. You have to get very comfortable with your speaker's voice. You have to get much, much better at writing. And then maybe years down the line, you can start crafting your speeches word for word with scripts like Obama does now. But that's probably quite far away. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Next time we're going to discuss questions, um, not only how to answer questions uh, after you've given a public speech, but also how to uh, ask questions, because both are actually quite important. Um, until next time, keep speaking. Uh, comment below if there's anything you'd like us to cover or if you have any specific questions. Um, yeah, until then, take care.